and I, and I know how to understand people like uh, like you. Well, that's that was Jimmy. Anyway, so dear believers, uh, we laid out years ago kind of where we wanted to fit in all of this pattern. We want to be a chronicler, a historian, archivist, and a documentalist. That's the, that means that we wanted to chronicle the historical reality. We have chronicled literally everything that's been going on around us over the, dec the last decades. We've been ex especially uh, accurate since 1986. That's uh, over 35 years ago. That's a while back. And uh, the historical process means that somebody had to hopefully be alive that would keep a detailed, accurate account of what we have had to face or reality what we would have to face. And we say we because... It was clear to us way over 30, 35 years ago that there was nobody in our environment willing to go through what we were going to go through in, in order to acquire the knowledge and the, uh, the hikmah that it would take. Who's going to put up with all the stuff that we have had to put up with to chronicle that? Nobody... We already knew that a long time ago. And if you read from 1981, 79, 80, 80, all of that, we talked a lot about longevity. Longevity. We talked about protracted struggle. And we have been practicing that protracted reality. I'm telling you, that we've chronicled, we've historicized, and we've archived. We've archived on cassette tapes, CDs, DVDs, uh, written. All of that is part of what we knew, uh, first of all, once you gain a certain amount of knowledge, you, you will be very fortunate if you can select the part that you're going to play in a struggle. You select it. When you select the part, that means you're, you're, you're more willing to accept the responsibility because you say to yourself, when you look in the mirror, I have selected this part. I have chosen this part that I'm going to pay, play. And you've read enough, studied enough to have a very good idea of what it's going to take. Uh, that uh, if you travel that way before, you know where the hills and valleys are already on the highway. You know at what time of the year you're going to travel from here, say, to California, so you know what highways are going there. And you know, after you've been that way so many times, you know what highway you're going to take. You're going to know where the big cities are. You're going to go around those cities. So if there's any traffic jam, it won't bother you. You just go around the city, right, and join up with the highway at another time. Or if there's an I-70 out there, and it's going to be blocked up maybe in uh, Kansas City or one of those places. Well, there's another highway right out there. Go right along with 70. It's called 40. Have you ever seen it? Yes. 40. 40 goes east and west. 40 goes all the way from here to um, Salt Lake City. Yeah, no, 40. Goes right along. It goes the same way I-70 does. Just like Route 1 goes the same way that I-95 that goes. 
Route 1 is the old 95, just like I-40 is the old I-70. You see what I mean? The old state highway. And every highway system is like that. When they put these new highway systems in, right? Because the old highway systems always went from city to city. And I, the big interstate may go from city to city, but it tries to take you have the 295 and this to get you around the city. To get you around the city. The other, during the old days when it wasn't much traveling and what have you on highways, you went right through from city to city. So Route 1 goes right here through Baltimore. If you're down, uh, all the way down at the bottom of uh, this uh, United States, guess what you'll find? Route 1. If you go north to New York, guess what you'll find? Route 1. If you go all the way up to Canada, guess what you'll find? Route 1. That's the old highway system. Yeah, when it wasn't too many cars. So you're, you drove from city to city. You didn't drive too many places. You just... You know, you caught the train or, you you know, you just, uh, cars, uh, anyway. Now, so you can remember there's a word we always use a lot, anticipation. If we decided to practice this longevity and what have you in dealing with the government of the United States, that means we can anticipate what we're going to deal with. That's why I told the brother this morning, he was talking, and I told him, I said, you know, I'm happier than I've ever been before. He was taken aback a little bit. And he didn't want to believe it because he would heard a lot about what's going on around here, and he couldn't imagine that I would really be happy. Because he hears about, you know, what goes on. So, happiness has a lot to do with, uh, if you select a good health program, that means diet and exercise, you get enough sleep, you know what I mean, you're going to be pretty much, uh, comf- you can expect to, uh, and you don't consume alcohol, you don't do, so you're going to, you expect, unless you have some chronic illnesses, if you're normal, you would expect to feel good or feel a certain way, and then there's enhancing feelings. When you exercise every day, okay, you get old as shit, but you get slick. You know, like uh, when you get tired of boxers, some of the best boxers tell me, hey, hey, man, that that hole in the series. And you go, when you get the, he said, the, the worse shape you're in, the more you're going to hold. So if you get a fight too soon, you're going to be, holding and resting. You get slick, though. You ain't going to let the guy go so he can pop you upside the head. You're going to hold him till you done got a little rest. Then you're going to do like Muhammad Ali. Then hold him again. Okay. So that's what uh, my friend told me because I'm around a lot of boxers. He used to be middleweight champion just about, but he, he's the one. He was George Foreman's manager. He brought him back, and George Foreman weighed 320 pounds at that time. He trimmed him down and got him back to winning fights. And at the end, when George was 47, he knew it was time to quit. 
Why? Because he could see a punch coming, but he couldn't get out of the way. He, you know, so he already knew that. He says, time to quit. It's, uh, I'm taking too many punches now, and I can't get... Uh, I can see the, what is, what's happening. But <laughs> it, It's coming too fast for me to get out of the way or counter. Now, with us, our organization, when we chose the job that we have, when we selected it, we knew what highways we was going to be traveling along. So therefore, if you know what highway you're on and you've been on it before, you know where the ups are, where the downs are, where the exits are, you know. Like you travel far enough across this country enough time. It's just like if you go up and down the highway enough times and you uh, you take your family or what have you, after a few trips, you know where the cheap gas is. Right? Yeah, you know where the cheap gas is. You say, zoop, I'll pull off over here and uh, I'll save 10 cents a gallon. Which now that's a nice little piece, right? It's a big deal, but you know where the cheap gas is. It may be way over around the corner, but you've been through that town so many times, you know where it's at. Okay, the same thing about uh, hassles, bad responses, challenges, fitna. You almost know where they're at. And when they come, you're prepared for them. That's the beauty of longevity. And longevity gives you that type of uh, continuation where I, I plan to be here. I don't, uh, this is not an overnight stand, but I'm going to be here. And therefore, if I'm going to be here, they're going to do that. And if they're going to do that, then I'm going to have to be able to deal with that. And in what ways will I deal with it? Guess what? Now the ball's in my court. I know this is how the game is played. Now, what am I going to do with that? When we talk about boss man on the line, that means we've played this game so long. If we started this phase of the struggle, let's say uh, over 50 years ago, or this phase, the mustard phase, like say mm, over 40 years ago, And you come out with the same basic ideas and approach that we have now. You're going to have to be a pretty tough customer to survive that long. There's no way around it. Especially when you look around, nobody else has survived it. When you go through uh, certain things, you look around for people you can identify with. Yeah. They kill them. They run them crazy. They run them broke. They do all of that. But if you plan to go that way and you've had enough experience, then you have to plan. When you're going on that journey, going to be a long time, you're going to different da 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 you're going to have to pack up certain things to take with you. The main thing you're going to have to take to for longevity is vision, courage, and attitude. You have to have a certain attitude. I'm going to respond to this stuff in a certain way. You can't be one of our friends, good man, 
he he been through the same type of struggle. But he had a certain attitude. He was uh, he was a little high strung. And he didn't have one of the things that we call a lot uh, humor. He didn't have he didn't have a whole lot of that. I mean, whatever it was, he was not going to do that. And it was easy to predict what would happen to him because the enemy will study what you have, what you're prone to, and if you're not going to take certain things, well, that's just what he's going to do. Okay. Well, this is different. 